Get ready for the smartest bundle in streaming. Six streaming services for the intellectually curious. Featuring Curiosity Stream with the best collection of documentary films and TV shows. Psalm TV and great stories from the world of wine. Taste Made for the fun side of food and travel. Topic with the best thrillers and crime stories. And so much more. From nature to history, technology to food, mystery to adventure. Get six streaming services for one low price. At $4 a month, it's the best deal in streaming. Learn more and sign up now at smartbundle.com. Hey, David Bellavia, you get a clean slate for the new year. What about a clean tub? Let Bathfitter give your tub or shower a fresh start with a custom bath solution that fits your space to perfection. It's installed in one day, and it's so easy to clean, you'll volunteer to take on cleaning the entire bathroom. Call Bathfitter at 242-8999. Book your free consultation. Tell them Bellavia sent you, and you get up to $1,000 off or no interest financing until 2027. Call Bathfitter at 242-8999. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Marks and Reese on a Tuesday. Johnny Marks and Ike Reese. Hello, Ike. Johnny Marks. Holla at your boy. Well, Jack Fritz let it be known he was back even before we spoke today, so we welcome back Jack Fritz, who comes off the injured list. Jack? Hey, my goodness, brother. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I couldn't sleep last night. I was so excited to get back in here. How you feeling? You all right? Yeah, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to go full Wentz and be sluggish today for the show, but I, I got to be honest, kind of feeling it. So you got the new variant, I'm told, the Delco variant of uh, of something. Yeah, Delco. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you're feeling good? Everything's good? Yeah, everything's good. We're all good to go, ready to, uh, you know, talk about a playoff team. Well, J- yeah, Jack's, Jack is is ready to go for sure. So, I mean, so let's start here. Like, obviously, yesterday we're, we're reacting to the game and we're reacting to the Packers winning and the, the Eagles becoming a playoff team. I did think it was – I, I thought it was a little weird – that you don't have more people that are like really pumped up that the Eagles made the playoffs, right? Like as much as we talk about the Eagle, as much as we obsess over the draft and free agency, and then they finally get to training camp, and then you know they play the games. Like you would think that the ultimate goal, which is of course winning the Super Bowl, but you have to get to the playoffs to even to even think about winning the Super Bowl. And I understand we have a realistic look at what this team really is, and they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. But still, like. I was really happy coming in here yesterday. I was pumped up when I woke up in the middle of the night and I checked to see if the Packers won. And like, yep, yeah, of course they won. They were winning when I fell asleep. Um, it seems like that you get a lot of people, you get some people that are like, couldn't be happier. You get some other people that are like, yeah, yeah, I like that they make the playoffs. It's cool, but like, I, I don't hear the overly happy people out there. Like, would you say the same thing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think people are, you know, I think excited and happy that the team is making the playoffs and you get an extra week of football at least uh, with this football team. But I also believe there is a a more reserved fan reaction that says, yeah, this is nice and, and this is cool, but we understand that this isn't – I mean, I think there are some fans that are still reluctant to buy all the way in. They haven't seen enough. And and because of the way the team made the playoffs, the competition they faced, all those things, it's it's not fair to them that they don't necessarily get our full level of excitement for this team. But it's almost a separate entity, meaning that this 2021 team almost has to be looked at in a vacuum. Right. That's what it is. It's a good season for this team. But if you're an Eagles fan that's been around here for a long time, that have seen one-year wonders from a team and and have seen things go south fast, you're going to be a little more reserved in and and as to whether or not you're buying all the way in. And that includes the coach. It includes the quarterback. It includes some of the other playmakers that we like on the team. I think there is less – I think there's less anxiety when thinking about those things, but it doesn't mean everybody is fully on board and fully confident that this is the beginning of some new era that's going to lead to a title. I I agree with you. I think people aren't totally buying the big picture of everything is, is, is good and we're good going forward, right? Like we have the coach, we have the quarterback, we have the GM, we have the roster that's building, right? Like mm-hmm. I agree with you. I think I think the problem with a lot of the people that aren't 
overly happy is they're they're not living in the moment of being happy. That, or even they are living in the moment. They're happy the team's in the playoffs. But it, it's but. Like, but, yeah, I'm still not sold on this. I'm still not sold on that. So I, I think that's what it is. They don't totally buy it. Yeah. Jack? Are you on? So I haven't. We haven't gotten your reaction to the Eagles making the playoffs. It wasn't that long ago that you were rooting for uh, for losses and for firings. Well, I was, et cetera. I was rooting for what I thought was the best thing for the Eagles going forward. Right, and I do think that there might be a portion when it comes around draft time when we're picking in the 18s <laughs> rather than the top 10s. We'll be no, thinking no, we'll be picking in the 20s. All right, picking in the 20s. Sorry <laughs> that that uh, there, I won't be thinking. Wow, I kind of wish we lost more games. Actually, probably lose in in round one. But like, I, I just I can't believe the like. I don't know like about this team. Like Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni in their first year together made the playoffs. I don't care about the schedule. Like that's 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 impressive. That's impressive. It is. Uh, is it really though? I is think it, it is. is. Yeah. I think it is. Okay. Well, you know, I got to be the I got to play devil's advocate today. And 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 here's what I'll say. And and this doesn't take away my happiness with the team getting in the playoffs. This is me more or less trying to understand where the skepticism comes from, where the the hesitancy comes from as far as being overly excited about the team this year. Because I do understand why there isn't that. Their most impressive win came against Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. That isn't anything to get overly excited about. I mean, unless you like one-yard touchdown runs, which about seven of Jalen's touchdown runs have been one-yard runs, one- to two-yard runs probably. I mean, even the fact that he has 10 rushing TDs is not like he did it in the fashion that Lamar Jackson rushed for 10 rushing TDs and 1,000 yards the year he won MVP. He was dynamic. Well, and you could see it every week. You saw it. It showed up in the win-loss column. Oh, by the way, I think he threw 30-plus touchdowns that year when he rushed for over 1,000 yards. Mm. So even being – I think it's more or less – the level of excitement says to me it's it's more of a uh, reaction to everything not being a disaster. It's almost like a relief. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like, okay, the coach wasn't a disaster. Whew, thank God. Doesn't mean everybody is now thinking, well, Nick Sirianni is the next Andy Reid. Right. It's not a dumpster fire. We'll see. Right. The quarterback. Huh? Wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it doesn't mean he's the next Russell Wilson, mm-hmm. right? So I think you get a little bit of that with our fans, with our fans, and looking at this team because there was a portion of the season when things didn't look good, when people didn't think the coach would be here next year. I was hearing more of the one, one and, and done, done. Sirianni, mm-hmm. right? Um, <laughs> the, 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 everybody wanted the defensive coordinator fired, right? Yeah. You know, so that was there. There was a lot of that going on, and I think you can be happy that the team made the playoffs, and still have sort of a realistic view and perspective about the team. Because that's really where I'm at. I like what they did, but it doesn't mean I believe all of a sudden the Eagles are a top ten team in the league, a, a top ten roster in the league. Right. Yeah. It, it's. I, I would say the majority of people fit into that category of happy they made the playoffs, glad they make the playoffs, still not totally sold. Still not totally sold, not totally buying in, like all, all the things that you said right there. I mean, they're fortunate with the schedule and everything else. And that's true. I mean, it, it just is. Yeah. It just is. So so when the Chicago Bears at 8-8 eight and eight make the playoffs because some other team lost and they backed in, Everybody in Chicago isn't saying that Mitchell Trubisky is our quarterback of the future. We found our guy. No, they went out and drafted Justin Fields. And Matt Nagy's been on the hot seat well, the entire he's season. He's going to get fired at the yeah. end of the year, or he should. Yeah. My only point is, is that that's a team that made the playoffs, and the way that they made the playoffs mattered. Well, it didn't mean anything going forward. Listen, Carson Wentz drug a team to the playoffs. He gets speared in the back of the head. And the team still goes out and draft a quarterback. They didn't take into consideration what he did at the end of the year to get the team into the playoffs. It was more or less, well, he still got injured. We need to go get a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if everybody, just based off of what we've seen this year, is now all of a sudden saying, we got our guys, the coach and the quarterback. It's easy to say that in a moment. John Ritchie made a very valid point. When going back and forth with Joe the camera today about the Howie Roseman stuff, right? 
if this team finished eight and nine and didn't make the playoffs, would everybody be that happy? No. But why not? Because they didn't make the playoffs. So making the playoffs this way changes everything. Yes, it, it does. Yes. And that, and you're talking about a game or two difference. Exactly. Uh, a, a, ba- a ball bouncing one way or That's another. That's all we're yeah. talking about. You're right. That's you're all right. we're talking about is a ball bouncing one way here or there. Or how about if New Orleans has Jameis Winston or there, there's, there's you know, Washington doesn't get, lose half its roster the first time you play them. Like all these things. If one or two of those games go the other way and we miss out on the playoffs, is everyone as happy about the team, the coach, and everything else. If there's seven to ten at the end of the season, you'll get some people that say it's progress. It was a good first right. year. You get the other people that say fire Howie. Jalen Hurts isn't the guy, which is ridiculous. That that would right. be ridiculous. Your first sentiment is where I'm sort of at. Right. It's progress. See the seven and ten versus them finishing possibly nine and eight and being in a playoff berth. It's not not much difference in that for me. So progress isn't overly happy. Progress is good. Yes. And making the playoffs is good. Yes. But it's not. Whoop. We're set. Yes. Let's go. There, there's the difference. We that, got our guys. Got our quarterback. And that's where I'm at. Now I may feel good about the quarterback, but it doesn't mean if I look at the other teams on the roster. I mean, if I look at the other teams in the playoffs. In the playoff competition, where would the Eagles rank amongst both conferences? Just looking at talented roster, coach, quarterback, whatever you want to look Last. at. I, I'm, I'm just that, I'm just asking. I don't know. I well, it's toward, know, if it's not the bottom, it's it, it's near the bottom, right? And then and then you may think there's a couple teams that aren't going to make the playoffs that are in a better situation than the Eagles are. They maybe they're not going to make the playoffs because of injuries or what have you or whatever. But I mean, well, oh, the can, Ravens, right? You can look at rosters and be like, okay, okay, how happy should I be about where the Eagles are right now? I mean. Right. Are, is it I'm happy they are on a 4-11 and 11 team, 4-11 and 1 team, and it's not a dumpster fire, and we seem like we got at least a baseline, a building block, or do we? Are, are we a player or two away from being a Super Bowl contender? See, I think we're a long way away from that. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, to me, this is just the beginning. I don't even look at – when I look at Andy's first and, – and the first year we made the playoffs in 2000, that was our first year. That was Donovan's first year as a full-time starter. That roster is better than this roster by oh, far. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the defense had – you guys were you, set. You saw playmakers. Yeah. You said everybody's in their prime. They're young. We're not getting rid of any of these guys right now. We're about to go on a run. How many of those guys do we have like that on this team? Uh, let me let me check. And that's just a One legitimate question. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's more than that. I'm just saying, do you – you see what I'm saying? Like it's, it's everything has to be put in its proper context. Well, I mean, you're talking about Pro Bowl corners that you had a, a, a budding future Hall of Famer at safety. You had an all a defensive line that could get to the get get to the the quarterback. Hugh Douglas was an you know an All Pro. Yeah, Jeremiah Trotter had two Trot- tackles that year. You had uh, Ike Reese, who was uh, who was a who was a, a contributing was a player. Man. Yeah, the madman out there. Yeah, the, the defense is ready to go. Well, and then it was dude, you had Troy Vincent's, Deuce Staley's, uh, yeah. uh, Trey Thomas at left tackle. Was Runyon there that year? First year. Coming, uh, first that was year. Runyon's first year. That might have been Carlos Emmons' first year. We had Brian yeah. Mitchell. Yep. Like so, like had, had like, a lot of talent like on that, that team. Yeah. That team in its first year making the playoffs, people felt better about because you could see the talent on the team. Mm. Yeah. All right. All right. Two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. So you're an Eagle fan. The Eagles make the playoffs, but there's not a lot of not a lot of overly happy people out there. I am. I mean, I I think I see more of the makings. Ike for a for a core, right? Like, do I totally believe Jalen Hurts is the guy going forward? Well, you have to. That's the quarterback. If you don't believe the quarterback is the guy going forward, like, what are we doing? I think that well, we don't have a quarterback if you don't believe that. Well, I believe that I'm excited to see what he looks like next year. Because that I, means you're not sold on him. Yet. No, I'm okay, not sold okay. on him. No, okay. nope. Okay. I want to see what defensive coordinators how they react and what they try to do to him next season. Lamar Jackson took a step back this year. He won an MVP. So I want to see what happens with Jalen Hurts. But, it, it, like, he's shown real growth and improvement this year. I know, but even with Lamar, either you got to – either you believe – I'm not saying I'm, – I'm just saying it can't be – even with Lamar taking a step back, it doesn't mean Baltimore doesn't believe in Lamar. You may not believe in him, but it didn't change Baltimore's mind about Lamar right. Jackson. No, you're right. So either you believe in a guy or you don't. You got to be able to ride through a tough year – because based on what you project him to be or what he's already done. I know Jalen isn't there yet. I'm just saying it's tough to to have a guy you believe in him one year because he played well, and then the next year he doesn't play well, then you don't believe in him. It, it's An organization can't think that way. you got to stick by the guy through the thick and thin unless you don't believe in the guy. And I mm-hmm. believe Baltimore 
even if they want, don't make the playoffs, they believe in Lamar Jackson. I agree. Well, yeah, he's going to get a new contract at mm-hmm. some point when, when they do that. And he's been terrible this year, quite frankly. He, was, he has he, not when, been good. When he's played. He's missed a lot of games. Let's take some phone calls. Let's go to, uh, start off with Will and Frankfurt. Will, go ahead. What up? Hey, good afternoon. Happy New Year, guys. You too, Will. What's up, Will? So, you know, in this whole conversation, uh, I'm, I'm on the fence, and I'm going to tell you why. It's not, co- it's not because of the coach, because the coach is unsold on Nick Serian. He's improved okay. Okay. tremendously from when we were like, oh, man, who could be the next coach next year? Right. <laughs> but it's, and it's not necessarily Jalen to a point because if Jalen wins against San Fran and maybe a you know a Dallas or, or or one of those other teams, you're 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 like you know I'm comfortable. This this year this season feels like 2016, a seven and nine season. You're you're comfortable. You're not sure what's going to happen next year, but it's not Super Bowl. We're not we wasn't thinking Super Bowl after Ooh. 2016 until no. so we went on that run. You're, we're comfortable. I'm comfortable saying, okay, we get, we're in the playoffs. Anything can happen. You know, if you get a win here, get a win there, and then you lose, say, you know, in the second or or, or in the NFC championship, you're like, you know, I'm 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 sold now. I'm sold. I'm 100 percent in. I got my guy. I got my quarterback. I got my coach. I got everything else falls into place. And you brought you kind of saw my thunder I, when you was bringing up the 2000 y- y- y'all team. Uh-huh. Y'all were set. For everything and suffer a couple of resistance, but y'all were ready to roll because y'all have veteran leadership. Right. This team kind of feels like that a little bit, not a lot, a little bit, mm-hmm. with certain veteran leadership. Older players, though, than yeah. than what was on Ike's team. Yeah, a mm-hmm. little bit older players. So it, that's why I say a little bit. Mm-hmm. If you could get some key pieces in the off season, have a decent draft, maybe we'll see what happens. But I'm 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 like you know I'm like a burrito. I'm I'm hot on the inside, cold on the out. You know. <laughs> So, so are you happy or not? Uh, you know, I mean, are you happy with a burrito? Are you happy with a seven seven eleven burrito? Never. I mean, you, you feel your stomach. Two in the morning, you are. Yeah. No, you but you know, you think satisfied. when you have it in the microwave, it's going to be good, and then you eat it, and you're like, this isn't good, and then ten minutes later, you're like, this really isn't good, right? Exactly. You know, you're like, eh. but then sometimes it comes around, and you're like, you know, hey, that that, was, you know, that burrito was actually kind of good. I had the spot. Until, you know, hours down the line and then you're in the bathroom. All right, Will. Love it, Will. Right. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Good call. Yeah, like, so after the after the initial, hey, we're in the playoffs, this is awesome, wears off, like, how do you feel after they lose in the playoffs? I guess is the true indicator of how you feel about the team. Because, like, yeah. as happy as I am right now, that's more because I'm happy to be in the playoffs and I was looking at a 2-5 and five start, and I was like, oh, my God, this team's a dumpster fire. This is going to be years before uh, everything's going to be okay. And then you calm down and you realize, like, no, nah, like, we were, you know, we overreacted and they were able to figure things out. And it was the first year for the coach. And it was the first, he was a rookie quarterback as well. Like, see, so a rookie quarterback and a rookie coach. And listen, it took a little bit of time. There were some growing pains and they figured it out by the end of the season. So I, but yeah, the two and five, I was They figured fire. it out to what level, though? I mean, it, we were losing 10 to nothing in that game. We were uh, last second interception away from fighting for our playoff lives this week. Yep. Well, it's like as you much, know what I mean? Like, it's not like they've been blowing teams out or, but, or anything of that nature. But as much as they struggled early, they've been really good the rest of the game, right? Like, and Have they been good or has the other team been bad? I mean, we're, but they were good in the beginning of the game, right? So if they're good in the beginning of the game, i got to give the Eagles at least some credit for them being good the rest of the game. They've outscored, so 35, in the last five games, 35-7 to seven in the first quarter they've been outscored, but then the rest of the game, 114-39. to 39. Now, the competition does matter. I mean, yeah, Garrett matters. Gilbert and, uh, by the way, Mike Lennon and Jake Fromm's the worst two quarterbacks I've ever yeah, seen. So that matters, and you had to come back to beat them. And you had to. NFC East games, they're they're never easy. Beating Washington <laughs> twice, even yeah. even how uh, they did how it. How come the NFC East games are easy for Dak? <laughs> like, 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 he seems to beat every team in the NFC East. But just like the NFC South, you'll get Tampa that loses to one of these other teams that aren't very good, but because it's a divisional rival, the games are weird. So I give the Eagles a lot of credit for getting the wins against Washington. Yeah? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Rob. <laughs> Rob in North Wales. Rob, how are you? What's up, fellas? Happy and healthy New Year to you and your family. You too, What's Rob. What's up, Rob? Hey, so you know what? I'm 54 years old. I've been a diehard since the minute I came out. You know the uh, you know the womb, 
See, this this is a gift season. You know, nobody, everybody wasn't sure what to expect. Everybody's ten and seven, mm-hmm. eight and whatever. You know, we have a first year coach. We have a, a quarterback who has so much heart and talent. You know, and and you just get that. I get the feeling for the first time in a long time that even if we go down, this kid's gonna find a way to win it. He's not going to stop until he until he can win it. Why didn't we go this fifteen team, and zero then? Well, you know what? Because listen, we're, there's there's a lot of new chemistry oh, going on. Okay. We got we have listen guys. We have eight hundred pounds of left tackle and nose guard. All right, look look at the Ooh, future boy. there. Look at the future there. Maliata and 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 Dickerson mm-hmm. are wonder are are, are beautiful. We need another couple guys to shore up that line because Kelsey's not going to be around longer. Johnson, we, we hope you know. He's longer. Yeah, we need him another five years, <laughs> Rob. We do, but guys, we're going into this draft with three picks. Three picks. Remember when the Cowboys went into a draft with three picks? They built a dynasty around well, it. And I'm not saying Howie Roseman's going to build a dynasty. Jimmy Johnson, too. Who, yeah, where, where is that? Well, I, listen, I agree. But, you know, at the beginning of the season, people were saying, that uh, Sirianni was very close to Vermeil in his ways. Who was you know? that? Who so, said that? Well, I'm an expert at football. Mr. The only, Sirianni, the, the dad's dad. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only station I listen to. So, it, you know, who, who knows? Maybe it was. But somebody uh, did. Okay. Somebody did. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm, Rob, I'm listen. Saying. Rob, I appreciate your positivity, mm-hmm. and I welcome it. Thank you. I'm glad you're excited. Now, you seem pretty positive. Yeah. Much more positive Didn't than me. Didn't make a lot of sense, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't, it didn't really make a lot of sense, though. It's just I'm an Eagles fan, and I'm excited. Right. Well, since yeah. the womb, though, you got to factor yeah, that in. Yeah, that, that didn't make a lot of sense. I love the Jalen as a winner. Oh, 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 he should never lose then. Right. He, he wills him the victory, except <laughs> right, the yeah, games that he doesn't. Except the games that he doesn't win. Or the games victory. he has to throw too much. <laughs> well, those are Rager's fault. <laughs> well, I, listen, he was good for two weeks before before uh, Rager? Sunday's game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really didn't. And by the way, Kenny Gainwell isn't much better as a kick returner. He gives, he keeps bringing him out of the end zone. It's like, dude, just take the knee. He never makes it to the 20-yard line when he brings it out. Listen, man, those guys are like, I'm only going to get to touch the ball three times today. I'm I'm taking this ball out. Pretty balls. much. Um. <laughs> yeah, can't they can't they bring Reno Mahe back? It was perfectly fine downing. You're, you're calling a fair catch. Two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. It's Marks and Reese. Two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. All your get calls excited. coming up next. Yeah, seriously. We can't even be excited no. about making the playoffs. Seriously. Like, other than positive Mike or, or Rob from from North Wales, people are kind of like, well, you know, kind of like, no, it's okay to be happy. This has been a great season so far. Right, I wouldn't use great. Yes. No. C- compared to where we thought it was going to be. <laughs> no. I was. Lo- I, I didn't think Jalen Hurts. I thought Jalen Hurts was going to be benched after winning five, or, losing five or six in a row, and they were going to minch you in there. Well, it wasn't I mean, his fault. Meanwhile, they turned it around. They did, and that and that and and there's there's something to be said for that. There's something to be said for figuring it out, and that's what Nick Sirianni and this quarterback has done, and the whole team. Jonathan Gannon, excellent defensive coordinator, Ike. Uh, Happy birthday, Jonathan Gannon. Probably. Happy birthday, Jonathan. Two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. Are you sold on this Eagles team? What is tampering your excitement about a play? We're in the playoffs. Or are you ecstatic? I won't even know it yet. Yeah. <laughs> got another week to wait. Marks and Reese, your phone call's coming up next. Don't go anywhere. But, hey, listen, enjoy your favorite sports like never before with BetMGM. Just sign up using the code MARKS, M-A-R-K-S. Your first wager is risk-free up to $1,000 because when you register with BetMGM, you'll get instant access to a variety of parlay selection features, live betting options, player props, and daily boosted odds specials. Plus, you'll earn M-Life rewards points that you can use for room, dining, and and more at any MGM resort nationwide. So enter the code MARKS, M-A-R-K-S, when you sign up for BetMGM and place your first wager risk-free up to 1000 New to Curiosity Stream. Explore the world of caves miles underground. Yours is the first light ever to illuminate this cavern with wonders never before seen. Amazing. Watch the Curiosity Original Underworld. And did you know body temperature changes based on your emotions? See how our feelings impact us in ways we never imagined in the science of emotions. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are just $20. That's $1.67 a month. Visit curiositystream.com. 
For over 50 years, Value Home Centers has served the do-it-yourselfer. Value is conveniently located in your neighborhood, and each store has a hard-working and talented team ready to help you with your next project. Shop in-store or online today and let their experts help you find the products you need from the brands you trust. Whatever you're working on this year, Value is ready to help. Visit ValueHomeCenters.com to find a location near you. Value for the do-it-yourselfer. Hey, David Bellavia here. Just because your existing bathroom has a tub, that doesn't mean you're stuck with it. Bath Fitter can remove your old tub and convert it to a shower in one day. Think of how much safer your bathroom will be if you don't have to step in and out of a slippery high wall tub when you convert it to a shower. Don't wait. Call Bath Fitter now at 242-8999 and book your free consultation and get up to $1,000 off or no interest financing until 2027. Call Bath Fitter at 242-8999. Hey, it's Bowerly. Your fireplace or hearth is the centerpiece of your family's living space in the winter months. Maybe it needs an update or maybe a whole new look. Or if you're like me, you don't have a fireplace and want one. Every year, AAA Timberline moves inside when the weather's too cold for outside masonry and helps Buffalonians transform their winter escape. Whether it's a new brick, tile, or stone, get your project designed now so you're not left out in the cold. Visit aaatimberline.com for more information or call Jeff and Ryan, 741-2400, 741-2400. Dollars only at Bet MGM. Oh, yeah, all right, we're back. Marks and Reese Twitter questions today brought to you by Marks Jewelers. If you got engaged over the holidays, visit the expert at Marks Jewelers for the best selection of wedding rings. You can check them out online, Marks Jewelers. Dot com. Uh, what did Jack Fritz cook up today on the Twitter question? All right, here we go. What is the main reason why there is an overwhelming excitement about the Eagles making the playoffs? Don't think they're good? What? I'm ecstatic or the season is already a success? I don't know. 50, I mean, it's a... Well, I definitely go with the season is already a success. House but, money? <laughs> yes. Big I'm, house money I'm show. definitely going with that one. Yeah, I mean, I I would I would agree with with that as well, but I still am ecstatic. But it's even thirty five and thirty five say they don't think they're that good. <laughs> I like pain. I love. I mean, I absolutely love this love this fan base. But I mean, they're being honest. They've seen good teams. They've seen almost great teams. The Super they've Bowl seen a Super screwed Bowl. everything up per usual. Well, well, here's the thing. It I, did. Other than other than saying that. Hurts isn't as bad as I thought he was going to be, or as better than I thought he was going to be. Either way you want to slice it. I, I think it sounds better by saying he's better than I thought he was going to be. And the coach is better than I thought he was going to be. And I'm just speaking in general terms as a fan. Other than saying those two things, what other – like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. If you look at the team, and I'm just, I'm just – I'm trying to get into the mind of those that aren't as bought in. What else should I be overly excited about? Offensive line, dude. Like <laughs> the be, left side be, of the offensive on, line. Be, be serious, man. No, no, but like, no, listen, like, we're not. Listen, I'm a football guy. That works with me. That but offensive line being the reason for a fan base to be excited is not gonna. So no, that's not gonna fly. W- would you agree that that one of the strengths of this team right now is yes. the offensive line? Right. It's to the where biggest it, strength of the team. Right, but like to to your point, you don't sell an offensive yeah, line. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a bunch of O line jerseys running around out here. No, <laughs> well, they, nobody... they they do love running the football. Yeah, in theory, that sounds good, but that isn't to me. You're not going to base your excitement on the future of the football team based on the. You do that with line. Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow and offensive skill guys or playmakers on defense. Yeah, we're not sitting around here debating O linemen every day. No, we're not. Okay. No, so... and and so <laughs> if if, mean... if Devontae Smith was was uh, was Chase. Or you had listen. If Devontae Smith was Jamar Chase, then Howie Roseman would be getting, uh, uh, you know, appreciation day, and everybody here would be loving uh, Howie Roseman. When you think about that, like when people talk about the Devontae Smith pick, it's almost as if it's like, dude, he's a no-brainer. Of course, you took Devontae Smith. Needed a wide receiver. Right. He's the best guy. You were right. able to trade up, get so, ahead so of the that's, Giants. I'm, saying, I'm not saying that's what I'm saying. That's what fans will say. Right. When they look at the, the Devontae Smith pick, well, he's also like he—he he was a safe pick. 
Mm-hmm. He looks like he. I mean, he kind of has, has came as advertised, right? Like he's a good wide receiver. He's gonna be. He's gonna be good. He's gonna be good, good. for the Eagles. But it, he ain't it, Jamar Chase. But he's not Jamar Chase. He's not even close. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. I, I mean, is, is he Jalen Waddle? Okay. Like I think those those two are more comparable. Waddle probably has more big playability. But we've seen Devontae going up and making some but plays. Even and, Waddle's not Jamar Chase. No, he's not. Like, even I mean, we project these guys. It's, no, he's it's, not even it's close. Safe to say. We aren't. We weren't right about. I remember hearing about how great Jerry Judy was going to be, and this guy was going to be out of Alabama. They aren't. They're good wide receivers. Jamar Chase is a great wide receiver. He's a, worth. There, a, there's a difference be saying, between saying somebody caught the routine ball and 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 they didn't drop it versus saying the dude went out and got 266 yards receiving and three touchdowns. Yeah, Devontae Smith's a good route runner. I don't even know if Devontae Smith has 100 yards receiving yet this year in one game. Did he? I remember it because I remember his big deal. I think he got like 140 in one game. 140? Yeah. Hey, I missed that game. What, <laughs> what, what game was that? The Kansas City game? I'm looking up right now. Let me see. A buck 40? He got he, two 100 oh, yard yeah. games. Lost to the Chargers and then the Kansas City game. Yes. Okay. Which shouldn't count. Well. <laughs> I mean, it counts, but right? but it's not the same. It's it's not the same because they were down <laughs> okay. big. The Chargers game was a game where they yeah. they they actually were okay. in it late. So I would say that that's but okay. The closest other than that was the was an eighty yard game. And it's not a knock on on Devontae, everybody. I'm just saying when we're being excited about the level of a wide receiver, I'm I'm trying to give you the difference between the levels of wide receiver. Justin Jefferson in his rookie year is a star wide receiver. Jamar Chase in his rookie year is a start. And they're both Pro Bowl wide receivers setting records. Yeah. Like, like that's the difference between getting a guy that's competent, that can be a player, and getting a difference maker. Mm. But I think for us, it, they, the fact that they finally got a competent yes. one yes. means no, a lot. No, you're absolutely right. No doubt about no, it. No, they didn't fall on their face. Yes. They, like, like, think about it. Think no about everything about I'm it. saying. That they, like They're not a dumpster fire. Mm-hmm. The coach isn't going to get fired after a year, and Jalen Hurts is better than I thought. Yes. Right in the in the offensive line, yeah. Right, and Slay came back, turned back into the Slay that we thought we were getting when when we mm-hmm. we traded for him, mm-hmm. and and so did uh, Javon Hargrave. Hargrave looked good, yeah. And those are reasons to be positive about the team, but we're trying to figure out why everyone isn't overly excited. Yeah, why isn't there the let's start the pregame for the playoff game right, right. now? Let's go. I, I give you another example with Cincinnati. The quarterback, the receivers, like, like that's a reason to be excited in Cincinnati. That's all you need. Yeah, right? T- like that, that. That's a reason to be excited. T. Higgins about the future. T. Higgins is is a really really good young wide receiver. Jamar Ch- yes. Tyler Boyd's a perfect third guy. Yes. Right? Joe Burrow's a star. Well, start there. That's where you should have started at. Yeah, <laughs> that's where you should have started at because it starts with the quarterback. He's a star. It starts with the quarterback. When you got a quarterback that everybody believes in, that's going to raise the level of excitement of your fan base. Mm. Like, I'm just telling you, that's what it is. I'm no longer ecstatic, Jack. Oh, God. <laughs> Can't believe they made the playoffs. Freaking team. Who oh, cares? No, no that's no the reason. <laughs> it's, no, we're trying, to, we're trying to. No, that's not what I was just shooting no, for. Jack, I'm out. I know. I, I'm just I want, saying. I want draft picks. We're like having a, hell no. We're, we're having a community <laughs> discussion about why people aren't overly excited about the team. I just think this is the reason why there's measured excitement. I also think people are afraid to admit that maybe they're wrong about some aspects of the team. Like, Hurts is better I than I think they... that's a part of it. Yeah, okay. people don't like being wrong. Okay. I, I hate being wrong. I'm wrong all the time. But, like, people... where were you wrong? How Most. Much, how much time you got, pal? I mean, no, the, what was the biggest thing you were <laughs> we wrong about? Two, we got three and a half more hours. Well, let's see. I, well, I, my gut was always in on Hurts, and then I gave Sirianni, up. Yeah, you, you, Sirianni, yeah. Sirianni is the answer. Uh, Sirianni was leaving in Las Vegas, and now mm-hmm. I think they found the next Andy Reid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, mean. I, I from, right, like, but I, like, but I'm okay admitting I'm wrong. But there's a lot of people who are stuck in their way about Howie, man, Mike. There's a lot of people who are stuck in their way about Sirianni, and there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that don't think Hurts is that good because they don't think he can throw the ball. Yeah, and that's kind of where I am or, with. Uh, or is how good do you think he is? Right now, see, you got some people that go over the top with it. Wait, right, like so, so a lot of it is, yeah. How good do you think he is? There are people that will tell you they think Joe Burrow is an elite quarterback. Uh, Justin Herbert. It's an elite quarterback, right? Those, those are fan bases that people don't have questions about the quarterback. Nope. So there is a mixed sort of, um, I guess, thought process when it comes to the, the, the coach or the quarterback. I, 
you think more people are settled in on Nick Sirianni or Jalen Hurts or both? Mm. See what the people say, Ike. Let's go to Tom mm-hmm. in Vancouver. Ah, Tom, happy new year, buddy. How are you? you? Know, happy new year to you guys, man. I am so glad to have you all back. It's fun to hear things mixed up when we get uh, Joe G in there and such. But uh, yeah. having the team together is great. <laughs> it's good to be back. Well, and Tom, uh, the, the, the fellas don't know because they were out when the mail came in. But guys, I made sure I did not open this up until I knew Tom was calling. And Tom, did you send us a Christmas card? I did. Here it is, fellas. Oh, I just opened it right here on air. Oh, nice. I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to read it on air, Tom. But well, uh, if it's embarrassing, can you read it? Well, it just says. No, wish- there's nothing it's- embarrassing there. Actually, it's sort of funny. Yeah, it just says, <laughs> wishing you a joyful holiday and a peaceful new year. Uh, the personal note, it says, dear Marks and Reese and Go Birds. I'm assuming that's you and James and Elliot. And, and- <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming that's you guys. Thank you. Can't you send a separate card for them, no, no. Tom? No, 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 but that was sort of the point yes. in this one. Oh, don't worry. Here I go. It says, sorry, James and Elliot. John may hang up on me if I don't put them first, and you guys would never do that. that that's a shot at uh, Marks. Thank you. It says, thank you, for the, <laughs> thank you for the great programming in 2021, i.e., don't let uh, Rod screw things up. Uh, that sounds like a comment from me. And it says, we love you guys. Tom, is that uh, Myrna and yeah, Timmy? Yeah, Myrna and myself. Yep. And so he is a beautiful picture of his family with Tom right there, uh, and he and his wife and his son. So I wanted to wait until you called. Whenever that was, I put the uh, the card in my bag, Tom. I did not open it, and I wanted to wait until you called when we were all here so I can open it up on the air. Thank you, Tom. Well, Very nice my of heart, you. My heart is touched. Yeah, I appreciate and, uh, it, Tom. Yeah, you, you guys, man, you guys deserve it. You, and this, I think this speaks for a lot of the listeners. You have, you guys have just helped us so much in this terrible time of, uh, of COVID and uh, the Micron and all the rest of it, keeping us all uh, together when we, when we can't be there with a lot of our friends in person and all the rest of it. So uh, you, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. Now, let, now let's get to business. All right. See, I was worried about Jack's COVID, but then I saw Mike Zimmer's frostbite, by the way. <laughs> that, that was pretty awful. I don't know if you guys oh, noticed that it. one. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, and then I, I, yes. I just wanted to mention the in the post game show. I noticed that around you the term uh, JG was being used, and yeah. you did not take the bait. Nope. And I was very impressed with that. <laughs> nah, yeah, you know I don't do. I, yeah, Tom. See, I don't do the JG thing. Yeah, I just, I just don't. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, hey, Jonathan. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I'll leave it so, so getting getting to the the question that you guys have, you know, <laughs> these, these guys have they've they exceeded the expectations this year. I thought they were only going to win six or seven games, and they've done a lot of things really well. Sirianni does look better. Hurts looks like he has potential. I I'm glad those there that they have the opportunity to potentially that keep have a have a second first round pick. You know, trade that trade one of the first round picks and have a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, another first round pick for the next year and if there aren't any hot shot quarterbacks because then in this draft because then it would be more concerning but you know i'll tell you that when i think about this for me the the reason why i'm i'm happy but i'm not ecstatic the last two games those slow starts and some of those things it's just Oh, uh, the slow yeah. start yeah i mean that, that uh, is, yeah, the I mean, slow start in the scud tom thank you happy new year thank you zappy yeah, I mean, we were four minutes in. We took up a lot of time on the... Right now, I just can't wait to get off this phone call. Beginning of the phone call. So well, I, I mean, he, I, he sent us a card. I thought about... I, I thought about a promo code Ike at the end of it. I so. mean, he sent us a card. <laughs> I thought about clipping him even before the sports point, just because wow. he used up his time, but I, I you know... I'm, wow. All this spirit. Yeah, he, 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 is, he is very nice. Now, and I appreciate the card. I look forward to seeing uh, the picture of him and his family. Uh, I'm not sure you, you really do. <laughs> hey, I let, him, I let him make a point, all right? I didn't zap him after the two minutes that you're allotted. Okay. Let's go to, let's go to Jacob. <laughs> Jacob's in Salem, New Jersey. Jacob, go ahead. How are you? Hey. Hey, guys. How are you guys this morning? What's up, What's Jacob? Up, Jacob? And by the way, you want, I... you don't use JG? Everybody's saying, well, JG's doing a great job. And Ike comes on and he's like, Jonathan Gannon's defense. Yeah, I just keep it the way I have all year. I keep it real. Yep. I'm not going to get one place and then do something different and then come on here and say something different. Why people know that you're a real dude. And that's why they come dude. to me. Exactly. Yep. 
Go ahead, Jacob. I'm sorry. No, it's cool. So I am ecstatic right now. I think Jalen Hurts is the guy for the future, the core that they've built. Jalen Hurts, uh, Goddard, and Devontae Smith, I think those are three guys you can really build off of. And I don't understand why people aren't talking about the offensive line more. I, I, I mean, I understand well, because it's not boring. Like the glamour. <laughs> it's Jacob, it's boring. You do, you do know why it's boring. It's not boring. No, the it is. Line, running the ball, they've been compared to, like, the Bears teams in the 80s, and now that – that is like the pinnacle of the run game. And I think that's where we're heading to right now. I Running the ball is tried and true, and we can see wins games and get you into the playoffs. What what they're doing – Yeah, when you're playing – hold on, hold on. When you're playing average to below average quarterbacks, you can do that and get into the playoffs. You can't do that when you're playing top-tier teams and top-tier quarterbacks. You're not going to run – unless you have Derrick Henry back there, you're not running your way to the playoffs. I, all right, well, let's look at the uh, Colts. The, out of the five of the Colts' wins, they beat the Jets, the Texans, the Dolphins, and the Jags. And, and the Cowboys, they beat the Giants, the football team, the Saints, Falcons, Panthers, and Vikings, and those are all middle of the road or less teams. Yeah, but you also have, so, to, you also have to give the Colts that, wins, right? Like, of course you're going to beat up on the bad teams on your I, schedule. Yeah, I just said that, yeah. You're going to beat bad. You can do that Every, when you're playing bad teams. Every everybody in the NFL is paid to be there. It doesn't you a good team beats bad teams and and looking where we were in the beginning of the season and where we are now, the Eagles are a good team and I think they can win one or two playoff games. Okay. And running the ball is the way to do it. Well, why didn't they use this against Kansas City, Tampa Bay, the Chargers, the Cowboys the first time around? Like like those were good teams that we played against. Why why didn't we run then? Uh be, I, I don't really have an answer for that. I'm just optimistic about what we what we're doing now. No, I, I no, I understand it. I think and it works for this season, Jacob. I think it, I think you're absolutely right. I'm with you. I just challenged you a little bit on like this is some sort of um, way of doing things, and this is the, what we're going to do moving in the future. You think the Eagles want to run the ball 45 times a game moving forward? Really? Oh yeah, it's no, Jeffrey they, Lurie. They, they, they made the adjustment based on the level of talent on their team this year. So they, this, this was the way we had to win this year. I, it reminds me of 2003 with the three-headed monsters. I think Donovan threw 16 touchdown passes that year. We didn't have any freaking wide receivers. So our best players were the running backs in our running game. And the defense. That, and that's our defense wasn't even that good that no. year. We had, Dalt got injured. Troy no. got injured. Uh, I mean, like, guys, I'm just saying, that's how we won on offense. That's how we won on offense, because that's what we had to do. That's what we had to do. It was. It didn't mean that's what they wanted to do and envisioned us right. doing from a team. They made the adjustments this year. They want to throw the ball, and if Jalen is going to be the quarterback for the future, he's going to have to become a better passer. Clearly, and they're going to get. They need to get better receivers. By the way, these aren't dynamic running backs. Half the city is not even sold on our best running back. Yeah, he's the one guy that is dynamic, but he can't stay healthy. <laughs> exactly. And half, yeah. the, half the city is even sold on him. So we're going to go into with Boston Scott and Jordan Howard. Let's go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. Come on, man. But with the, as much as the, the Colts beat up on, on tomato cans, they, they also have really impressive wins on, on something the Eagles don't, right? Like, right. At, like they crushed Buffalo at Buffalo. They beat New England. They beat Arizona. Right, that that's three. That's three. I mean, the Eagles have New Orleans or the Broncos as their <laughs> Trevor Simeon or Teddy Bridgewater. Right. <laughs> so, all right. And, and and by the way, yeah, the Colts may find out that was good enough to get to the playoffs, and they can be one and done if the quarterback doesn't play better. If the quarterback doesn't throw the ball, the Colts are going to find out. Guess what? Having Jonathan Taylor is great. We're going home after the first round. Yeah. Like, that's what the Colts may realize, that their passing game needs to be better. It can get you into the playoffs because there's just enough games and enough mediocre teams that if you have a dynamic running back, yeah, that may get you in, but eventually the quarterback is the guy. Am I missing out on something here? No. Right? Like, like do we all of a sudden now minimize the importance of the quarterback? Uh, uh, no. So no. I, I think when you're evaluating teams and you're viewing a team's or trying to project 
forward, moving forward, a lot of that has to do in the confidence that you have in the most important positions, the head coach, the quarterback, and the guy who's responsible for putting the team together. So what I'm telling you is this isn't my personal view. This is what I think the masses feel. There are still question marks about those three, whether how we can put a team together. We're still having people rip Howie Roseman. Yep. So there are people that don't believe he has what it takes. The coach, they're like, eh, okay, we'll see when expectations are there. I would say people are most sold on the coach now than the other two, the quarterback and the GM. Right, I, and then I, I would just well, – let me ask you this with the, with, with the coach. Again, I want to play a little devil's advocate and make this conversation interesting. Let's do it. Other than getting the team ready to go from a CEO perspective, rallying the troops, is there anything the offense has done the last three or four weeks where you're like, my goodness, that's some excellent play design. That, that is – wow, I can't believe we put that in. Like, like, How much have we seen of that from the offense over the last month? I'm not even giving you the whole season. I'm just saying the last month. Not a lot. Well, Darius Slay's been uh in Yes, he's been a, yeah, he he's been a good uh That's how great our offense is. Devontae's played tight end. We got, yeah. Well, but think think about it like what was no, the he lined up in the tight end position. Played. What was the biggest <laughs> offensive like what was the biggest offensive play? Not the touchdowns, but what was the biggest offensive play from Sunday? It was probably the Hurts throw what to hell, Greg Ward. Yeah, which he said he called the play on his own. It didn't look like he called the play on his own and drew it up on his own. But, that didn't look like it had any cohesion. No. and it was a Wentz so, play from last year. There was a communication <laughs> problem, so he called his own play, mm-hmm. and he had to scramble out of his pocket throw all the way across his body and the field a dangerous throw yes. that Greg Ward was able to catch before it hit the ground. Yes. On a third and 14. So it's not like we were looking at a dynamic offense Sunday. Well, I'm not seeing a lot of scheming players open or anything well, how many like explosive that. plays are we seeing? Not a lot. What was the, what, so what was the I mean, last seven, explosive play? We had play? seven points in the third quarter. <laughs> late in the third quarter. <laughs> Boston Scott dove over the guy. Yeah. In the, so I'm not saying we, you shouldn't be excited that they're in the playoffs, but that's different than saying – yeah, this is the making of the future, and we're we're set. We just need to add a few more pieces here and there. Right. That's that's that, and I think that's where people are like, you know what? I can take this year for what it is, but man, we still got a lot of work to do. They do have a lot of work to do. Of work no to no do. doubt about it. They do. We got a lot of work to do. When you're looking at Dallas, what they have on their roster, Green Bay, Arizona, San Francisco, the Rams, like these are all the teams that are in the playoffs. Eagles. Like, the Eagles, are, and just compare your roster. How many rosters of the teams that are in the playoffs would you rather have than ours? Mm. Just and, and everyone else can do that exercise on their own. In other words, in right. other words, would you? It, it would be an upgrade to have another roster. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I would, I would answer that by saying that the Eagles are. How many? How many? Eagles, how many teams would you take the Eagles roster over? So probably none, but these other teams are also further in their development and their building and being ready to win right now to where this was the Eagles' first year of doing it. Right. But your overall point stands, which yeah. is the Eagles are in the first year of doing it. Yes. This is step one in building. Yes. And they have a they have a, a <laughs> they have a lot, a lot of work, work to, to do. do. Yeah. Yes. They do. They do. Yes. Yep. Two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. It's Marks and Reese, 215-592-9494. Your phone calls on the other side. Also, another member of the Philadelphia 76ers. Is he starting a war with the fans? Who is it, and what are we talking about? Celebrate him. Celebrate all the stuff he does well. We'll play that coming up next. In addition to your calls on the Eagles, I am not happy they made the playoffs all right. I, I'm, I'm out. I'm just kidding. Marks what? And- what? <laughs> no, I was ecstatic to start the show. Now I'm like, ah, eh. No, I'm still happy. Marks and Reese on 94 WP. Don't go anywhere. Hey, listen, 40 days up to 40 pounds. Say it with me. Say it with me. 40 days up to 40 pounds. NJ diet. It only takes 40 days to lose 20 to 40 pounds. And NJ diet is a contractually guaranteed money back program. So you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Uh, NJ diet, 100% tailored to you by using bioenergetically personalized supplements based on your hair, saliva, and blood work. Then, NJ Diet uses DNA testing to create your ideal diet and workout plan and workout regimen to help you keep it off. 40 days, up to 40 pounds. That could be a real thing. And unlike other weight loss systems, NJ Diet's all natural. There's no shots, no hormones, no prepackaged foods, no surgery. 
and there's offices close by, Princeton, New Jersey, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and King of Prussia. Or how about this? Do it from home. Live online video consultations are available. Start your new journey this new year by calling them now. NJ Diet, 855-5NJ-DIET, 855-5NJ-DIET, or go to njdiet.com. That's njdiet.com, 40 days up to 40 pounds. New to Curiosity Stream, explore the world of caves miles underground. Yours is the first light ever to illuminate this cavern with wonders never before seen. Amazing. Watch the Curiosity Original Underworld. And did you know body temperature changes based on your emotions? See how our feelings impact us in ways we never imagined in the science of emotions. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are just $20. That's $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Hey, David Bellavia here. Just because your existing bathroom has a tub, that doesn't mean you're stuck with it. Bathfitter can remove your old tub and convert it to a shower in one day. Think of how much safer your bathroom will be if you don't have to step in and out of a slippery high wall tub when you convert it to a shower. Don't wait. Call Bathfitter now at 242-8999 and book your free consultation and get up to $1,000 off or no interest financing until 2027. Call Bathfitter at 242-8999. For over 50 years, Value Home Centers has served the do-it-yourselfer. Value is conveniently located in your neighborhood, and each store has a hard-working and talented team ready to help you with your next project. Shop in-store or online today and let their experts help you find the products you need from the brands you trust. Whatever you're working on this year, Value is ready to help. Visit ValueHomeCenters.com to find a location near you. Value for the do-it-yourselfer. 